Hey there, let's line up all our little 20 millimeters and take a quick peek see at them. Compare and contrast where they lie. You can find a thousand test shots of them anywhere, including Flickr, anywhere online. So, the point is what someone has as far as a breadth of experience. So, uh, while you think everything I state, some people anyway, think that everything I state is purely subjective, you know, I do have an extensive experience with one le of lenses. And uh, whatever I feel about a lens personally, I do try to keep it out of the videos. And I do try to be objective because, you know, uh, I'm not making these videos for myself. I'm making them for other people. And I want to be helpful to you. So, obviously when you ask me about a lens recommendation, I can't tell you what I recommend because I need to know what it is you shoot, you know what camera you have, what your budget is, so I have to be objective and that is the only true way that I can actually be helpful to you. Like I said, nobody's got their hand up my fanny, I've got all these Voigtlanders I've been reviewing lately, but I paid for all of them out of my pocket the same way the rest of these lenses. Nobody's giving me free lenses or free rentals or anything. I don't think Voigtlander's ever sponsored anybody. But anyway, let's take a quick look at the Voigtlander 20mm and let me take it off of my Nikon D750 here and put back on, which I should have done that before starting the video. That would have been the logical thing to do, right? But I didn't think ahead, so that makes me an idiot. The Let's take a look at the uh, the rear element. You might think, whew, I hit the camera there. I stupid of me, too much caffeine. And you see that <laughs> tiny rear element on the Voigtlander 20mm. It's an aspherical element. You're thinking, oh my god, that's tiny. That can't be for, full, for, full, uh, for a full frame camera. But it most definitely is. Now you can see I have a filter on the front of this, but if I actually collapse it down to its smallest, uh, to its uh, smallest, most compact point, you can see, now most people think the 20mm F, both of these are 20mm F 3.5s, okay? Now this is an icon, this is a rather rare lens, not that expensive. Typically you can find it for $300 and $350. This lens is $500 new, typically you can't find it for less than $380 or $400 and a quarter, or usually a lot more than that used. Typically these used are 90% uh, of, of the cost of a new one. But it's about 14 or 15 millimeters uh, shorter, especially if I were to take off the lens hood on this white liner 20 millimeter. 15 uh, to 20 millimeters, it's roughly about 15 millimeters shorter than the 20 millimeter f3.5 Nikkor. Both take uh, 52 millimeter front elements. Now, which one is better? Now, uh, the Nikkor has very, very, very slightly better uh, uh, corner to corner. Um, uh, illumination on a full frame, so the, the vignetting is not as bad as it is on the Voigtlander. The Voigtlander is a hair sharper. When we're talking about 70% roughly of the frame, it is sharper and has a little bit better color saturation. That's due to the lens construction. Also, the autofocus is absolutely silk, sex, and sugar. It is dreamy, and this is an expensive little damn lens. The reason I bought two of these is that I fear that it's such a small company. It reminds me of uh, of Spyderco, not Spyderco, but uh, excuse me, Amkusta. Uh, so now, Nikon is exactly like Spyderco, which is a large company that produces nice, high quality stuff. They're knives, by the way. Amkusta is a tiny, 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 tiny company. Now, obviously, that is the case with Voigtlander, but they are owned by a larger conglomerate, uh, Cusina, and therefore Zeiss, but that does not mean that uh, Voigtlander cannot go under. If they're bleeding from every orifice, uh, I'm actually concerned, but I have no empirical evidence that they could go under or could be reabsorbed and they're just going to see, screw it, we're going to stop making these lenses, we're going to, you know, integrate this into the larger company. I mean, that's just typical business practices that people encounter all the time, so that's the reason why I own a copy of all of these, and you might want to jump on buying one right now. Like I said, I have no connection as far as you buying one, I don't make a damn penny. Um, but this lens is exquisite. It's damn tiny, and especially for a 20 millimeter. I mean, for a 20 millimeter, the, as sharp as this lens is, and oh my God, it is just like fo it's just like a focusing uh, soft butter, like the rest of the uh, the Voigtlanders are. It is just exquisite, um, but it's not cheap. 
Okay, it is not uh, internal focus. You can actually see how far it extends. And the only downside that I can actually see to this lens, and it doesn't really bother me unless I'm going from near to far constantly, is that this lens has a rather long throw. So this is the throw from infinity, the closest focus. It does have a long damn throw. Much longer than it should have, but that may be due to the fact the rear element is aspherical. Now the throw on this, let's take a look at the throw on this 3.5 20mm Nikkor. You can see it's a whole lot less. Okay, from closest to infinity, it's about uh, a hair over 50% less than it is on uh, the Wittlander 20mm. Now, which of these is the best lens by far? I mean, hands down, you know, price being irrelevant. Well, it's unquestionably the 20mm f1.8. It's a G-series. Obviously, it's rather plasticky. It's a huge sucker. Got better corner-to-corner -corner sharpness. It's a better... Uh, it's more sharp overall. Is the color saturation as good? No. The, which has the best color saturation? This one does. The Voigtlander uh, 20mm uh, f3.5. Uh, unquestionably so. This uh, 20 millimeter f1.8 uh, uh, nanoparticle coated nanoparticle is just only on one side of one element anyway. Is EDG series uh, Nikkor, which is $800 by the way, does not have a good of color saturation. It has really fast autofocus. Obviously, the Voigtlander is manual focus only. This is $800. It is sharper and obviously has less vignetting, better corner to corner sharpness, uh, but the color saturation is a little. It is a little less than it is on uh, either the 20mm 3.5 Nikkor or the 20mm 3.5 Voigtlander, unquestionably so. Um, now the other one, the optics are the same between this and the AIS. This is the uh, this is still currently made, and it's not cheap. It's unfortunate that this lens actually commands such an insanely high price. It's a rather noisy autofocus. It's the 28mm D series. This is actually a pre-D. But they're both exactly identical. It's exactly identical autofocus, exactly identical uh, optics, so it doesn't make any difference. The D looks exactly like this, it's the exact same lens. Um, typically, you can find these for like $350, $400. Um, now, obviously, it's a faster lens, it's 2.8 versus a 3.5, but my premise is, and this is purely subjective on my part, I don't give a damn. Between 2.8 and 3.5, I don't give a damn. So it's not worth it for me to actually spend 400 and 4 and a quarter on this lens when for just a little bit more I could buy something that is just so, so, so much better made and that would be the Voigtlander 20mm f3.5. So anyway, that was a subjective statement on my part, but it's also empirically true. And, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, not shooting... Uh, you know, club scenes and nightlife with 20mm that I'm going to really give a damn between uh, between uh, f3.5 and f2.8. My phone keeps going off in the background. I mean, I must be getting so many emails. I mean, my email account just blows up and it drives me absolutely insane. I love being helpful, but sometimes if I had hair, I would pull it out already. I get so much email. So anyway, here are four 20 millimeters. Likely my favorite uh, prime uh, lens focal length. And uh, which would I grab most of the time? It would be, well, it's kind of a tough choice. It would definitely not be the D-series autofocus or the AIS manual focus, which is the same, it's op same optically as this one. Um, it's a toss-up. Now, this is a rather rare lens, so it's kind of hard to find. So I almost have to reject this out of hand, even though it's an awesome lens, because you guys can't find it. And it's just basically a rare little sucker. You know, it's hard to find this lens. They weren't, they, they didn't make enough of them. And all these uh, speed demons like, well, 3.5 isn't fast enough. So Nikon didn't make it that long. They should have because it's really awesome. But it's rare, so it's a toss-up between these two. And we're talking $800 new versus $500 new here. Obviously, the size is no comparison. Um, this is just, this, as far as build quality, is no different than a $10,000 Leica. I crap you not. Everybody that's bought the uh, 35, uh, excuse me, the 28 millimeter. Uh, Voigtlander or the 40 millimeter Voigtlander off my recommendation. You all have just been as happy as a worm in a pile of poo, which makes me happy. I'm glad you're happy because I recommended these two lenses as the tits <laughs> because that's exactly what they are. This one sits on the fence. The only reason it sits on the fence is because it has this, well, I can't call it significant, but it has a substantial uh, vignetting between uh, f3.5 and f8. 
Um, but all the 20 millimeters do, except for the really expensive G series F1.8 to 20 millimeter nick core. So that's not a big deal. It's the nature of an ultra wide beast, especially one that's so bloody small. As I mean, this is one small damn pancake lens, and it's 20 mil. There's just nothing that says to me. Uh, I'm going to have a, a geek out moment that is like uh, optical pornography than a 20 millimeter ultra wide pancake. To me, that is just like a, oh, I love it <laughs> moment. So, uh, I'm holding the wrong lens there. Here we go. Here's the, uh, I had the wrong, uh, I had the wrong uh, Voigtlander. No, I had the right Voigtlander in my hand. See, they're both about the same size there. This is a 28 millimeter, this is a 20. 28 millimeter is just a wee hair shorter by about a millimeter and a half, two millimeters. So I have the wrong lens in my hand. So what? They both look identical. Um, so that's it. That's the review of the 20 millimeter Voigtlander. I said it sits on the fence. It is a must-own lens. I mean, it is incredible. It's not cheap, and you sure as hell are not going to find a used one cheap. You know, you might luck out, but I really have not seen it because if one ever comes up used at a great price, boom, it's gone just like that. And there's a good reason for that, too. Anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate everything. Of course, I kicked the tripod again like an idiot. And I'll...